I'm Rachel Wormsley. I'm the Policy and Law Reform Director at EDO New South Wales. Strategic planning is about what you want your community to look like in the future. It's about where you want development to occur, what kind of facilities and infrastructure you want, and where you want development not to occur, where you want open space, where you want uh, areas preserved for environmental reasons and so forth. It's visionary rather than reactionary. So if you're a local community and you have a block of bushland up the road, strategic planning is about what happens to that block in the future. Most people don't actually think about planning until a building is built next door or they want to renovate their own house or they move to a new area. So it's very reactionary and you think about development assessment, whereas strategic planning is taking that step back and saying, what do I want my community to look like in the future? What do I want to happen to that block of bushland up the road and my own street? There is a significant focus on strategic planning under the proposed reform. It's very much front and centre of these reforms and there is a lot of emphasis on strategic planning engaging the community and resolving a lot of the conflicts that occur in the current planning system. It's proposed that strategic planning will sort out community views, will, will address land use conflicts and will put in place a hierarchy of plans from the state level to the regional, the sub-regional, local level that will have a strategic clear logic and that everyone will have been engaged in the formation of those plans. Strategic planning has occurred under the current Act and many communities have engaged in really lengthy consultation processes about their regional strategies, their local environment plans and so on. So most, many communities are familiar with strategic planning processes. The difference in the new system is that there will be this hierarchy of linked strategic plans with a clearer vision between them Whereas the current process, there are many, many environmental planning instruments and it, it is more ad hoc and organic in ha how they're done. The new system is proposing a systematic, uh, a systematic process for developing a hierarchy of strategic plans. The proposed new system has some great features about it. Mainly the commitment to engage the community up front and actually ask them what do you want your area to look like and to to give the community a say in, in what what the future of their area looks like. It, they've made a commitment to evidence-based strategic planning and they've also made a commitment to integrating land use planning and the provision of infrastructure. There are a number of concerns that EDO has about the proposed strategic planning provisions once the strategic plans are put in place, the community has had a say. The flip side of that is that the community will not have a say down the track. So when the development does go up next door, if you haven't thought about it, if you haven't engaged in the strategic planning process, you may not have any rights of appeal or any rights to challenge development. So if you miss the boat now, you don't actually have a say about what you want to happen to that bushland block then it may, down the track, the block may be cleared for a development and you may not, you may, may have missed the chance to have your say. Strategic planning could also potentially be undermined by a few of the other reforms, such as public priority infrastructure, strategic compatibility certificates. There's some very technical concepts in the new white paper that need to be examined by the community because they do have the potential to undermine strategic goals. If a community has agreed on a vision for an area, they may be a bit surprised when down the track a developer has a right to vary the rules. One of the other concerns about strategic planning in terms of protection of the environment relates to the foundational principle for strategic planning. The White Paper and the Bill set out 10 strategic planning principles. However, they're not based on an overarching principle of ecologically sustainable development. They're very much weighted to growth and development um, in the context of sustainable development. This is absolutely not the same as ecologically sustainable development. Throughout the strategic planning rules that are proposed, there are various additional tests for financial viability of certain plans. 
there are no such tests for social viability, for environmental viability. So there's not a triple bottom line test for the strategic planning process as proposed. Now's the time to find out as much information as you can, and it can be completely baffling. Most people don't have an in-depth knowledge of planning law unless they've had to fight a local development or taken a particular interest. So it's about understanding what is proposed here. And I think it's important to stress that the community needs to get involved now or else it will be too late down the track. For example, in terms of strategic planning, there are already consultation processes uh, underway for the draft metro strategy for Sydney and a draft lower hunter strategy. These will become strategic plans under the new system. They're being consulted upon now and if the community doesn't have their say, they won't be able to have a say later on. The, the community should go to our website. We're putting some technical detail on the website so they can read in their own time to really understand. And they can always call our legal advice line as well.